is uh, 10 p.m. on a work day night. This will date this video, and not just date it, but, but sort of hour and minute it as well. The uh, vice presidential debate is going on. And I'm avoiding it by doing this. I'm missing something. What am I missing? That's what I'm missing. As I was saying, it is 10 p.m. on a work night, and I'm decidedly not watching the vice presidential debates. Just uh, finished up a batch of cookies, and I want to tell you about a TV show. If you know me, you may be surprised. If you just watch the channel and don't know me personally, A, thanks for sticking around. But B, you may also know this. I'm not a big sort of TV person. Um, it's not sort of where my uh, media allegiances lay, lie, lu, lay, low. <laughs> I make that joke all the time. Nobody knows what I'm saying. As the video title, and this is PJ Talks. <laughs> Oh my god, it's been a while since I've done one of these. This is going to be exciting to edit. Um, so I'm here to talk about Mythbusters Jr. Uh, i got my notes here. Um, and let's do this. So Mythbusters was a TV show um, that ran for a long time. And I'm about to tell you how long a time that was. Tell me things. I really like it. It's interesting. It's a really weird and interesting show. Um, because, you know, <laughs> they're kids. Um, one of the things that I found most interesting about it is Mythbusters Jr. has a lot of, like, cuts back, a lot of flashbacks to its predecessor show. The original show, the original series had cut backs like this too, but they, they served a, a different purpose. Um, you know, in, in the original show, what they would do often is cut back to a previous myth to show, hey, we've been to this location before. We have used this kind of um, material before. Here are some things that we found while working with it so we don't have to repeat those kinds of things. Um, sort of a, a really much more of a catch you up if you are, you know, just having this on in the background kind of show rather than watching it all the way through, which makes sense. Mythbusters is really good as a rerun show. <laughs> it's such an ominous, like, I don't, how do I, I'll just, I did this to myself. <laughs> oh no! This isn't any better but this is what we're going with. <laughs> yeah, so, so because these are, you know, the same people who are doing, if not similar experiments, then maybe experiments with similar, any of the similar variables, the similar place, similar um, sort of motion, similar materials, um, you know, it, it makes sense to then uh, give the, the material of what they may be referencing in the moment you know, if, if everyone in the show is comparing it to this one explosion using a shorthand that if you were just casually watching the show because it's on, you won't know, then, you know, it's better to just show what the, the sawdust explosion, the sawdust fireball looked like. Because A, now they're in the loop. B, it frees up the people who are actually making the show to talk about the show that they have made before and see it's good television to show the really cool things because if if they're if they're just in the sort of the building the experimental phase and you know you can reference these cool big explosions and whatnot um keep up the pace be like you know we're showing you a snippet of what you know may come more in this episode except you haven't seen it before Ooh, but in this show, it, it kind of feels like it's just trying to to prove the kids as as just as capable as as being sort of on the same thing as as all of the adults. Um, the way that they frame it a lot of the time is, oh well, experimenting with X Y Z is is no stranger to MythBusters. Here's some stuff that happened before. This chair is rotating. Look, <laughs> okay, it isn't just kid myths. We've been doing it this whole time. Um, and, and it feels in that way kind of like a, like a after-the-fact justification. 
like, it feels kind of insecure, like, like it's trying to prove itself. And it's not like any of them are, like, secretly behind the scenes in charge or, or anything like that. Um, but, you know, they take great pains to tell you that that's not the, 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 the case. But if, if, if a kid has some design specs, um, but not the full knowledge of how to implement that, uh, not the full knowledge of even what tools are available to them, not the full knowledge of how to maybe weld something big as opposed to just solder something small, um, then, you know, these are people who can sort of safely and cost-effectively implement their design ideas. Um, and, you know, foresee any, uh, uh, foresee anything that might um, sort of impede the actual sort of goal of trying to do the science on the myth. And so part of, part of the, the, the goal of that then is to usher the kids into doing those kinds of things as well. It is to understand that these are kids who do not have the full sort of set of knowledge as, you know, somebody who has been in special effects for decades, um, or in robotics for decades, or in, you know, whichever field, pick your buster. <laughs> um, and so the flashbacks can then serve as, as points saying, like, okay, so... In the past, you know, these people learned this thing and were able to take it from that to this other scenario, into this other scenario, and, and, and build institutional knowledge. And here we are trying to take that institutional knowledge and bring it in and, and, and sort of give it to these kids as well. Teach these kids this institutional knowledge as opposed to just whatever knowledge bases they have. And I think that's really cool because that's that's sort of what science is. It's it's, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants and, and it's understanding that, you know, you have been preceded by giants and would do well to learn from them. And that this show is in part about that transfer of knowledge. But if you do that without a lot of confidence, it can look a lot like number one. It can look a lot like insecurity. Like trying to prove that this show should exist in the first place. Prove to the person already watching it that they should be watching it. Or worse yet, remind them of something else and be like, man, remember this really, really cool thing? Wasn't this one so cool, but it isn't this. And I think it, for the most part, um, is able to, to wrangle itself out of that territory, um, which I think is just sort of the, the easiest territory to, to slip into unintentionally. And I think it, is, of course, never goes there intentionally. And I think it, um, on top of that, then also, doesn't go there almost ever unintentionally. It's quotation, it's, it's quoting something to build on previous knowledge versus quoting something to sort of put yourself in proximity with the person who you're quoting. This is sort of appeal to authority. And, and you know, as the show goes on through, through the 10 episodes, like it gets much better at doing sort of the, the second better one rather than the first one. And I think, you know, this is a part of the, the confidence, uh, not just in the people running the show, but in the kids themselves. And I should say the kids are excellent. It astounds me that they were able to find six children as capable, not just in the, the science and the construction and the engineering as they are, but simultaneous to that, with the like charisma to be showrunners, <laughs> to like like be the hosts, and be the hosts alongside the most like emblematic and charismatic of the Mythbusters, Adam Savage. Like, that's great. <laughs> One of the kids, so they they do they do a myth with dogs, and um, um, two of the kids like have dogs, and one of them has like a ton of dogs. And the other one is, uh, uh, um, so they always break off into threes and they always mix up which 
three are together. Um, and every tripling, it's not a coupling, it's tripling, every tripling um, works. Like, like there's no, there's none, no group or sort of pairing or whatever of the kids that feels like there isn't like good energy there. Um, I almost used the word chemistry, but I would feel really weird using the word chemistry just because of the other connotations around that. No, but these kids seem to get along well with each other, and if not, then they play it on camera really well. <laughs> so there's this one who doesn't have a dog, and is like, yeah, you know, I don't have a dog, so I don't really know how to, like, handle them so much. Um, I'm more of a cat person. Well, I like cats. I'm not, like... A furry <laughs> and it's so funny um, oh, these kids are so good <laughs> um, they 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 they're on TV time frames and so there is not an insubstantial amount of the you know a little bit too stiff a kid is saying a line and maybe it's something that they said unscripted but now they are saying the thing again. Um, but like, that's more than forgivable. These kids are amazing. They do all of the big stuff. <laughs> they launch a rocket with farts. Uh, um, and this is part of the problem though. The, the like Mythbusters always was so like campy and silly. And when you have adults who are doing this campy, silly stuff, you know, there, there's some amount of seriousness that's already sold because they're adults, but when you have kids doing the same fantastic, campy, silly things because they are kids, like, there's less sort of benefit of the doubt. Like, like, the myths seem to have been picked not by the kids, but by sort of the, the, the larger showrunners. Um, my guess is is a mix of like probably the 13 year old doesn't know how to do research as sort of deeply um there's a, a strong consideration of, of safety uh, and also sort of you know the kids um bringing in a fresh take um and, and being able to sort of make something of it themselves rather than sort of envisioning something beforehand um as might happen if if you know it's it's them picking picking the myths themselves and this is also sort of another one of the roles that that adam has where you know if if the kids aren't sort of able to to uh, uh sort of imagine um what sort of a next step might be um then you know he is a teacher to guide sort of towards possible futures um, and I think he does, at least generally, a, a good job of sort of imagining multiple futures to at the very least let kids pick from there, or at least sort of scaffold on um, platforms for them to be able to then launch themselves off of, rather than just saying, we are going to be doing X, then Y, then Z. Um, but part of that too, I think, is then in the selection of myths, in imagining um, you know, you want to make a myth where it's a little bit easier to imagine what the sort of progression is going to be. There's this level of sort of abstraction that I think is good to eliminate from all of that. But all of this just means that I want to season two really badly because the kids gain so much confidence and familiarity with each other along the ten episodes that like, you know, by the end, it's so good. It doesn't feel like it's trying to pander to a a judgmental audience it, it feels fully fledged and even with like jeez i hit the, the thing that made my chair go down <laughs> where was i they have themed episodes by the end ones that you know all of the myths inside of it are are, are long themes and it's great it feels like mythbusters um but you know without without sort of the, the continuation of building of confidence, then that, that role of passing down this institutional knowledge is kind of lost. 
potentially moot because you know you need actually time to to hand it down and one of the things that i would love to see is i want to see kids graduate from mythbusters junior whatever that means whether they're you know they age out or they're like going to school and they need more time to whatever or they just you know are moving on to other things like i don't i don't care what it means i just want to see these kids in in staggered order graduate bring on new ones and have the older i don't want to say older i will say the uh <sighs> senior that still implies age um the ones who've been on there more the more mythbuster experienced ones mentoring the younger kids because then you can have this cycle this loop where where you know you have these multiple different layers of, of sort of knowledge being passed on and that also allows more of the thing that I think this show is missing the most of which is one-on-one -on -one or possibly two-on-one -on -one interactions on camera with the kids um, you used to get a lot of interviews about the thought process and the design processes with the Mythbusters um, and now that usually happens with Adam because Adam is a lot more comfortable with the camera, has a lot more experience in explaining things and in a more concise manner than, for example, a 14-year-old. But, I mean, by the end, you get, you start to get more of that kind of stuff from the kids. By the end, you start to get more of just like the interactions while making things on camera as opposed to you know, the the sort of probably less editable sporadic happenstance in ink. And part of it too is like the personalities that at least I grew to absolutely adore on Mythbusters had 18 seasons. Was that 18? I don't remember the number anymore. Had 15 years to develop. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's completely unfair to, to imagine that, you know, in a single season, you know, the first seasons of Mythbusters just had the, the two. It was just Jamie and Adam at first. It was later that they brought on another team. And even then, that was a total of, what, five people at a time ever? And here we have six kids and Adam and an occasional, um, um, you know, advisor, guest, so-and-so. And so there's there's less space to give the personalities and the interactions of these personalities sort of to the camera, especially when you only have sort of those, those 10 on your feet episodes um, as opposed to 15 years. One of the things that I'm struck by uh, is Adam takes a lot of care in his language not just towards the camera, but with the kids themselves. Like, he never refers to the kids as the kids, it's always the Mythbusters. Because they are the Mythbusters, they aren't junior Mythbusters, they are fully, no doubt about it, the Mythbusters. I think there are a couple times where uh, maybe he is a little on the nose about, about it, but that's just a personal preference. Um, it's the kind of thing that, that makes me feel that lack of confidence um, where, where, you know, you have somebody trying to uh, tell you in these subtle ways that you shouldn't worry. <laughs> and if you weren't worried to begin with, it makes you think, why do they think that I'm worried? Do they think people are going to be worried? Should I be? <laughs> I wrote here the, the Space Myth episode, um, which I think was seven or eight. Um, it was the best so far. I really like that one. Um, and it feels like Adam is, is fucking science Willy Wonka if they were all Charlies. <laughs> <laughs> like it's someone just sharing the whimsy and, and sort of the, the grandeur and the bigness of all of it. Um, the parts of the show that I think are the best, um, like the really standout ones, 
are ones where it's clear that the kids are just like doing all the things that they have planned and Adam is there as you know whatever support is needed but then he just sees that what the kids are doing is so fun that he can't help but try and like get in on it and part of his role too then is you know being the first one to jump into the pool you know there's there's a lot of the the thing where um you know because these are kids who do not have sort of that on-camera experience their experiences with the rest of the technical knowledge needed to do the myth busting there there are some times where there's perhaps hesitancy to be as big or as goofy or try things out for the first time or you know even to just be sort of as emotive these are teens and tweens we're talking here and so then adam in being the first to sort of jump into to, to ridiculous stuff is giving them permission <laughs> sort of showing them how to do the things again this institutional knowledge one of the i think questions that i think is to the detriment of this show is trying to answer why Mythbusters Jr.? Like, why is this a thing? And I think part of part of the answer to that is the sort of passing of institutional knowledge. But you could, you know, theoretically do that with adults too. You know, you constantly bringing on new people and, and, and sort of trying to encourage this sort of cycle. Um, and so, like, what what is what is gained? rather than just not lost from making it Mythbusters Jr. Like, what does Mythbusters but with kids bring more than just Mythbusters? Like, even if they're, even if they're, they're, you know, both operating on the same level, what are the potential strengths and weaknesses of each? Um, and... I don't really have an answer to that. I don't think it's a good question is my answer to that. Um, I mean, part of my answer is like, why not the kids? Um, this is edutainment. This is trying to get people involved in the things. And, you know, it, like once an episode, there is some do not try this at home thing. But, you know, it, the whole sort of goal of, of Mythbusters as a, as a thing is to sort of show experimentation. And in that way, sort of the scientific method, right? Show trying the thing, not just taking it at its word and not just sort of taking your expectations uh, for granted, right? You can come in with something and think it's going to be busted but it's confirmed you can think it might be plausible but then it's just like way 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 busted you know it, it it's checking yourself um it's doing science let the kids do science <laughs> let the kids have fun blow stuff up you know smash giant dominoes play with magnets and i think there's a you know the safety aspect of all of it then it gets really tricky because you know, there's, you know, real safety danger to um, a lot of the stuff. And, and part of the institutional knowledge is Adam being like, I have worked with compressed air before in various forms, whether it be pressurized tanks, depressurized tanks, all of the sorts of different things. It's dangerous, and here are the ways how. So the kids in trying to experiment, aren't experimenting out of the bounds of safety. But sometimes that leads to a touch more sort of grown-up intervention or sort of hand-holding than, than I think is needed, or at least more than the show effectively frames as as even just precautionary and like like part of what really made me think about this is there's a there's a point at which um you know they're, they're dealing with something really delicate and they only have one of the thing um 
And so one of the kids who had been, you know, doing all, all of the stuff until that point is like, Adam, I want you to do this. And Adam's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, like this is delicate and I don't want to break it and you know, I, I, I would like you to take over for this just for this one little thing right here. And it's like, okay. Um, and it's like, this is stressful. And she's like, that's why I asked you to do it. Um, and like that, that felt much better because even though it was like a really low stakes thing and it would have been, you know, cool to have the kid do the thing. Um, it was the kid understanding sort of where their own level of comfortability was at and also their own desire for the scientific outcome as opposed to desire to just do things for doing things. Um, and, you know, calling in a ringer. Um, and sometimes I think it's just, you know, good to know when you want to call in a ringer. And so then, you know, the times where um, it feels like there's, there's sort of a, a presence over rather than a presence with um, after that moment. I was near the end of the show and so it was sort of retrospective where it's like, okay, um, here's, here's times where, where I see that happening. But, you know, this is also solved by just doing more of the thing because then the people doing the thing can understand these moments more. And I'm sure they're in the editing bay being like, Or maybe they're debriefing after filming everything, being like, hmm, I can't know. And so I, I think that sort of talking about some sort of safety with this is, is much trickier. Um, because, you know, there, there, there are real differences, um, but addressing those real differences constantly brings up, I don't want to say constantly, variably brings up that that first question of like why why with kids um like like what does this bring other than feeling like a gimmick um and it feels like a gimmick only in the name um again these kids do everything <laughs> they're so good the kids are amazing they're absolutely fantastic i want to see so much more of this watch it it's online places I actually did watch it like a place where it was intended to be watched. Um, they just have advertisements. For a strange reason, the Mythbusters Jr. advertisements almost always had two back to back beer commercials. I feel like this just reminds me, there's a couple times where the show uh, doesn't feel quite sure what level of coy it wants to be with the kids being kids. There's a part where it, like, they just had did like a you know, big success with something. And Adam's like, fantastic, let's go grab a beer. And they're all like, we can't drink. And Adam's like, it's an expression, let's go. And they're all like, okay. That one turned out mostly okay. <laughs> um, but then they're, they test a myth from Breaking Bad and all of the kids are like what's Breaking Bad um and it's like oh it's good because you know it's not a kids show um and then in one of the like interview segments with one of one of the kids where they're like explaining some of the thought process um again great see the personality of the kid undercut then by them saying like oh you know because in the show um, you know, in the episode, this thing happens. Or at least that's what I'm told. <laughs> and it's like, I can't tell if it's trying to sort of play act that this kid um, hasn't seen this episode or any of the show, I guess, or like, like what level it's trying to operate on. Um, and I if you're treating them like adults in all of the other respects, you can, I think, understandably treat them as more or less an adult in that respect, where you say, it's not a kid's show, but if they've seen it, we're not gonna pretend like they haven't. 
they do a whole like smoking PSA thing that I think is absolutely fantastic though because all of the kids are clearly like yeah this is disgusting um, and so having that contrast too then is like we see what it's like when the kids are in on it um, versus maybe they are maybe they aren't and and to, to give another great example of Watch the first episode. First episode is all about duct tape. It's fantastic. A kid drives a car, and that is one of the best, like one of the best things, um, because it's 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 you know starting to understand all of these kids and their personalities, um, and also then showing what the show can do with kids, um, and at that point you know maybe not more than the original, but at the very least, at the level of. Um, because, you know, we have Adam teaching a, a kid how to drive because they're just testing, they're, they're just testing tires at a pretty normal level. And so there's this 12 year old on the steering wheel like this, um, you know, just doing sort of slaloms through. Um, and it's great, it feels great. It makes a very simple driving thing feel like a massive accomplishment because it is. Um, it makes the tires feel so much more significant because we have, in part, somebody who has driven on duct tape tires as much as rubber tires. And then all of the kids get to sit in the car while Adam, with 15 years of slow accumulation of stunt driving knowledge, um, just tears up the track and the tires. And it's great! It shows why it's good to have Adam or, you know, a adult Mythbuster there, as well as the kids. Um, you know, it, it shows that, you know, the kids are being able to operate on the same level. And in the spaces where, like, it's very understandable that they can't, or at the very least would take a while to get to, um, that they get to be in the space and be there along the way. Um, part of this too, I think, is, is all falling into the trap of not the show's own nostalgia, but of perhaps Adam's, um, of being like, oh, you know, we say all the time, like, you know, there's always the high speed when, you know, there, a few people are like looking away when an explosion happens. Um, and they're like, ah, oh, I missed it. So there's always the high speed. And it, 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 at that, when it feels like a little bit of a peek behind the curtain but you know then it feels like the curtain is slipping rather than like showing showing behind the scenes showing more of of, of that work behind the curtain um and and i think it could do a better job of of sort of balancing that either um sort of trying to tighten that up a little bit more or as i think would be my preference trying to open that up a little bit more and do so intentionally and have the spaces to do so. Because part of what makes this show incredible already, already as though it isn't over, <laughs> is this is a post-final season of Mythbusters. Uh, Mythbusters, right at the very end, went through a, a, a massive transformation in how they did the show. Um, they, uh, part of the realization was they had been filming it like uh, like reality TV as if they didn't know um, sort of what was going to happen when where and with whom um, so really sort of deep field of focus wide angle um, highlight kind of stuff instead of we are doing science we know what we are intending to do when where and sort of exactly um, and so we can make everything look a lot better um, so when the car is like slaloming through the things, there's a drone cam by it. When, um, you know, they're doing something where they're like, like, uh, uh, trying to bust through a door, they get like really like gorgeous, like slow-mo on all of the, the, the things just like shaking and rattling and all of that. And so it's also all of this productional institutional knowledge that's already been built up. The, the groundwork has already been laid down. It just needs a little bit of sort of fine-tuning and, and rearranging, um, but they definitely hit their stride multiple times throughout the 10 episodes. Um, you know, they hit it way more than they miss. Um, 
not just episode to episode, but sort of within each episode, um, sort of the, the, the percentages, are, it's good. It's good and I want more of it. That's the end of this video. It's good and I want more of it. <laughs> I'm not gonna get it, but I would like it. Oh, and the debate just ended. Neat. I don't have to worry about that now. Good night, everybody.